Thank you all. Uh, we're thrilled to be here. Today, Brent and I are going over a process, an expeditionary capability development process. This process has been informed by the rapid velocity of technological change that our society is experiencing, as well as the diffusion of advanced information technology across the world. My name is Captain Eric Waggy, and I'm an Army Cyber Officer with a background in infantry operations, primarily looking at both conventional and special operations. Brent is also an Army Cyber Officer, but his background is in network engineering or tinkering and, and making technical tools. I currently serve at the Army Cyber Institute at West Point, New York, and Brent currently serves at the Defense Innovation Unit Experimental at uh, Silicon Valley in Moffett Field. Today we're going to role play or pr and provide you a narrative of what we think tactical cyber and electronic warfare might look like in the future. I'm going to role play a infantry company commander in the future with a tactical problem. I'll be the customer. And Brent will role play as a future electronic warfare and cyber team leader with a technical solution to my tactical problem. And again, th this process that Brent and his team are going forward is a lean, fast, cheap, expeditionary development process that's been gleaned from the entrepreneurial community and then repurposed for tactical level cyber and electronic warfare in the future. But before I continue, I have to go over a brief disclaimer. Please note that the ideas and thoughts you hear present today are ours and ours alone. We don't represent the Department of Defense or the US government. With that, let's begin. Brent. Excuse me. Brent, this is your target compound. Through various cyber means, we've been able to geolocate a high value individual, HVI, and his technical sensitive command control equipment to this target compound through various cyber means. There are multiple problems that we have with this compound before we launch our helicopter assault force and consequent ground force raid. The first problem is we have multiple armed aerial drones patrolling around this compound. They're blocking the primary avenues of approach for my assault force into the compound. And I need to quietly and quickly neutralize those airborne, uh, those UAVs. Next, the primary entry point to this compound is blocked by a heavy steel reinforced electronically locking door. I can't ballistically or explosively breach this door without risk to that sensitive technical command control equipment inside the compound, which I desperately need to exploit to gain actual intelligence. So I'm going to need some help from my cyber and electronic warfare team leader at the tactical level. So the two problems are, A, I need to rapidly, quietly disable or neutralize those armed drones and B, I need a way to rapidly and safely breach that target compound so I can flow my assault forces through and complete my mission. Can you help me? Eric, thank you, I think I can. So I understand the time sensitive situation with this. So what I'm gonna do is I've decided to reach across uh, boundaries, if you will. I'm reaching outside of the military, okay? I think it's this, this antenna, this device, which I've seen quite a bit in academia, at hacker conferences, et cetera, might serve the purpose here. Most importantly though, I'm able to make this thing in about half an hour, very, very cheaply, so maybe $10. And what this is, is this, the Cantenna is a portmanteau of Canon antenna. It's basically a, a, an open-ended waveguide or a directional antenna that will allow me access to wireless networks at vastly increased ranges. So the distances that you're looking at, I think this might work. And since I want to get this to your market, really, as quickly as possible, this might be a solution, right? And if, in case it doesn't work, I, you know, I know it's not perfect, We'll iterate a few times and make it perfect and, and make it fit what your mission is. So this is to remind you Project Hudson Wave. We have this minimum viable product. We want to test it to see if it works. So one morning, Eric and I went out to the site of, uh, this is the Hudson Valley, and we met at the Fort Montgomery Historic Site parking lot, the notional location of this bunker, this bunker of the future. In one of our vehicles, we left an access point in that parking lot powered it on, said, okay, we'll leave that there. We then all piled in another vehicle and proceeded south towards the Bear Mountain Bridge up there in the Hudson Valley. We crossed the Bear Mountain Bridge and met up and parked our car in 
uh, release point. From which, uh, from that location, we then began the ascent to the top of Anthony's nose, the fictional location of our support by fire, our cyber support by fire position, where we'll have that antenna. So you can see this representation here. It's over 4,900 feet. It's almost a mile away from the access point that we're targeting. Well, will, will this thing work? Will this $5 can make it happen? So here you are. Here we are at the top of this uh, summit. Eric's trying to point out the location of that vehicle. Admittedly, very difficult to locate this thing visually. So we're, we're, we're kind of downing it at this point. What well, we pressed on, we pull out our laptop from our backpack, we got the power pack, we got the canton, and we hook it all up. And after only about 30 seconds of searching manually, you can see Eric there in the upper right hand corner manually fixing this antenna. Sure enough, that network comes up. Wow, great. Well, it shows up, the signals are reading well, well. my network survey software says it's, it's there and it's, it's strong. But is this a success? Well, not quite. What I had done is I had pre positioned a file on that network, that access point, and it was only until I was able to download that file that would really prove to me that I had a reliable enough connection across that almost mile distance into that wireless network. And this is what I did. I downloaded that file and it worked. So at this point we said, great, success. We proved the viability of this product. But there's some problems here, right? We're in a sh uh, shorts and a t-shirt. Right? We've got a laptop, we've got a backpack. It's not very tactical, okay? So ever since we started this, this exercise, this thought process, this thought process and exercise, we said, well, we knew the, the, the first solution would probably be 80% solution. We're gonna keep iterating on it. And we're glad that we were able to get it out there so quickly so we can indeed iterate on it very quickly. So that's generation one, just to compare, of our product, the CAN, the laptop. And with generation two, which Eric will bring up, we've moved all the capabilities from generation one, that is the laptop, the power, the antenna, onto a very familiar framework that every warfighter in the world recognizes and sees. So this is what we call the cyber capability rifle. Right? We, order, we increase everything about one order of magnitude. So instead of $10 and maybe half an hour worth of a build as with generation one, we spent $150 on Amazon. So we spent about 10 hours in my garage one uh, weekend, and we created, this is, what you, this is what you see here. Power pack fits in the magazine well, very convenient. Raspberry Pi microcomputer to run all the software necessary for these types of operations that we're looking at doing. We've replaced the antenna with a directional Yagi type antenna. So for those in transmission RF, this, this is nothing new. This technology, again, is nothing new. What's important here is the process that we try to get to the field as quickly as possible. And that's something that we're quite proud of. All right, the key here is that we were able to, from start to finish, get the warfighters involved. Eric brought me in on this project. He presented this, the problem. I presented a potential solution. We got it to market very quickly. We tested it out. We iterated on it. And I would call this a success. So we're pretty happy about it. So I want to show you a few demos. Does this thing actually work? Well, it's pretty. Uh, well, it, we, get, we had about four days notice uh, between when we first announced the CCR and the AUSA demo, or the AUSA conference, at which point we had a rapidly prepared demo. But you know what? This platform was built for flexibility. So this was a true test of our product. So here, Eric talked about those drones that were providing overwatch of this fictional bunker. Here is a video demonstrating that we're going to take out uh, that drone. So this is an off-the-shelf drone that you can buy at Amazon or Best Buy. And with just 11 lines of code, I was able to program into the Raspberry Pi microcomputer um, a, a script to just knock this thing out of the sky. Right? Understandably, it's a very visceral reaction to seeing something physical happen with just the enter key or the push of a button. And so it's, it's no wonder why we're, we're so interested in this field. Right? I mean, the distances here, it's, it's, it's AUSA, it's only about 10 feet. But just imagine, we're confident that this could have been done over 4,900 feet as, as we, we tested with Generation 1, or, or almost a mile distance. It's, it's quite dramatic. So we talked about getting to that bunker. So what I, we did here is we went back to the garage and built a model bunker using real in, Internet of Things home automation controllers uh, to fit into our little model bunker. We outfitted it with a real electronic lock uh, real LED uh, internet controlled light to simulate that bunker that we're targeting. So you can see here that the rifle is built with flexibility in mind. We were just able to change a few pieces of software. So there I am demonstrating uh, swapping out a module, adding the new functionality, and taking, making that uh, lock pop right open. So you know, we thank our senior leaders that really put the, have the trust and put faith in us that we won't screw things up, give us the room to experiment, but we're most proud about the process that went on behind this. 
you know, the, te the technology is cool. We've proved a couple things in terms of technology-wise. We're able to bang out this tool very quickly. But more importantly, it's the process that we went through in terms of getting that product to market, iterating a few times, seeing some failures, that we think is, is very important. You know, we think that uh, this is a, a way to help ignite this third offset. For, you know, I don't, we don't think that the third offset will be characterized by technology alone, whether it's advanced manufacturing or, or AI or anything, any of these things. We think it's the agile processes that we develop as a result of a significant change in culture DOD-wide. And so we hope that this culture is more tolerant of experimentation, more tolerant of uh, captains going out in the morning for PT and doing these things, more tolerant, in fact, for failure, fast failure. And so this presentation is hopefully our small step in working towards that ultimate goal. Thank you.